Second type of sampling is your flat top sampling, or we can say the third type. The first one is not used in any of the signal systems <coughs> or the communication. Sorry for that. So communication systems. So we have flat top sampling or rectangular pulse sampling. Why the name is rectangular pulse sampling? Because we have a flat top here. So in a flat top sampling, the tops of the samples remain constant and is equals to the instantaneous value of the baseband signal xt at the start of the sampling. So at this point, the value is equals to the baseband signals means this signals amplitude and then it carries on during the sampling interval. The duration or width of each sample is tau and the sampling rate we call it as fs equals to 1 upon ts. Remember that sampling rate means what's the frequency there. Okay, so these terms are interchangeably changeably used over that sampling rate or the frequency of sampling or the sampling frequency. The width of the pulse in GT is determined by the width of HT and the sampling instant is determined by delta function. So in order to make this sampling possible, we use uh, another function h of t and we use delta functions so because we have to keep that constant. So we are using ht of this form and we are using an impulse function delta t or you can say st which is a uh, you can say sequence of your impulse functions at 0 ts, 2 ts, t, 3 ts, minus ts, minus 2 ts and so on. And we need to do convolution of these two signal to achieve this flat top. Okay, so we will do st convolution h of t. As we know, st is equals to as uh, you can say xt basically we will multiply x of t, you can see this here, multiplied with your delta functions. So it will be x of t and multiplied with delta functions placed at n equals to 0, n equals to 1, minus 1 and so on. So we are using this summation to show n equals to 1, n equals to 2, n equals to minus 1, minus 2 and n equals to 0. Or we can bring this inside also. It's not going to change anything here. And if you know that if there's we have an impulse function, so we can we know that the value of the impulse function is always equals to one. So we can say that delta t minus n t s is equals to one for small t equals to n times n times capital T s. So we can change this t equals to nts. Why? Because t is equals to your, your t is equals to n of ts. So we can say that we can use t here in place of small t we can write n of ts. Now if you remember we have done the Fourier transform of your rectangular function or gate function also we call it sometime which we did for minus t by 2 to t by 2 with an amplitude equals to 1. Here we are using the uh, ht which is 0 to tau then after a ts sampling interval from next point to uh, width of tau and so on which can be represented as this function also that sa or ga depending upon what you are using t minus tau by 2. So tau by 2 means if you remember that on centered at that point and on both sides at a difference of tau by 4. Whatever the value here was you have to divide it by 2. Whatever the values sorry not there whatever the value you have you have to divide by 2. So the function will exist on this side also and this side also. Now put these values here. We can say the convolution is written can be written as this. 
put the value of s of tau means s of t basically just change the variable it will be like this and h of t will remain same now if you change the order of integration and uh, summation summation will come out with x of n t s this integration will come inside you integrate these two functions this is defined at tau minus n t s only and this is defined for this range so we can just put tau equals to n t s in this one in this one this is tau minus n t s so put the value of tau here as equals to n t s because again this is an impulse function so the impulse function is defined for whatever the value there and its amplitude is equals to 1 so we can say that this will become h of t minus n t s and the integration will be done because then it will become a constant and the area under uh, the curve is equals to 0 let me bring something to explain you need to remember this that area under impulse function minus infinite to infinite is always equals to one so when you will put t sorry, tau equals to n t s from here then this will become this okay what will left inside is this minus infinite to infinite delta t minus n t s d t okay which is from this equals to one so we have left we left with this and this part only okay now again if you take the Fourier transform of this using the equation one we know that uh, convolution in time domain j equals to multiplication in frequency domain so gf will be equals to sf into hf so you need to find the Fourier transform of st and you need to put it there and find the Fourier transform of hf you need to put it there now sf we you know s of t is this so we need to take the Fourier transform of this then it will be equals to f into s sorry fs submission minus infinite to infinite x of this one how we did this is that this is again we know that equals to one for that range and this is the same condition is true for your submission also for impulse function so then it will become you need to use a shifting property time shifting property here and which will sorry frequency shifting property here and then it will become f minus n of fs and you'll put it here and gf will be then into hf if you will find the Fourier transform of this function then it will be equals to this so you need to find that Fourier transform yourself put it there and then you will get this part so we need to just remove this otherwise it's coming on the screen everywhere graphically you can represent it like this that your 
when fs is greater than 2 fm the function will look like this but when fs is less than 2 fm the signal will like this a different versions of it and when you will calculate your hf hf will be in this form this one and you will plot it on a frequency axis okay and when you will find the gf it will be of this form and you will multiply them so the spectrum of the flat top sample signal is shown in figure d so this one is your flat top signal we may observe that the distribution in the spectrum this distortion results from the fact that the original signal was observed through a finite aperture that is by holding the samples constant for a fixed interval we have introduced a delay of i of we have introduced a delay of tau by 2 and hence is referred to as aperture effect in distortion a vector aperture effect distortion we were holding the value of this for the particular time uh, we are doing the sampling so it's for tau we are holding the amplitude constant and due to this basically we are introducing the delay of tau by 2 and therefore we refer to it as aperture effect distortion if we need to reconstruct uh, the original signal from flat top sample signal we need to use gt there we need to use a reconstruction filter and equalizer which we are going to cover later what is equalizer and we'll get the message signal x of t now the questions based on this a continuous time signal is given below xt is equals to this so you have to find out the minimum sampling rate required to avoid aliasing aliasing is i explained in the i think first lecture of sampling when the signal start reappearing again second is if sampling frequency fs is equals to 150 hertz what is the discrete time signal xn obtained after sampling so if we'll see about this wrong part also so what is the frequency uh, for when f is f s is sorry f is between zero and half of the sampling rate of sinusoidal that yields sample samples identical to those obtained in part two the first one is your x t is equals to eight cos two pi, 200 pi t that omega will be equals to 200 pi fm is equals to 100 so the nyquist rate is fs equals to 2 fm so that is the minimum sampling rate you need to require to avoid an uh, sorry aliasing so if your frequency is equals to this and greater than this your sampling frequency then there is no aliasing second is if fs is equals to this what is the discrete time signal xn so the frequency of the discrete time say, uh, will be f equals to f divided by your sampling frequency we are dividing this frequency into uh, the samples given in the question so it will be f is your given frequency here fs is your sampling frequency which is equals to 2 by 3 so you can see the discrete time signal then will be given as x of n 8 cos pi 2 f n you will put the value of your frequency there so it will be cos 2 4 pi divided by 3 n and if you want to write it in the form of uh, 2 pi shift then you can write it as 2 pi minus this okay and the third part is what is the frequency what if the frequency is in this range of sinusoidal that yields samples identical to those obtained in part two if the frequency is uh, in that range zero and fs by two what is fs fs is your 200 so frequency is basically your zero and uh, between zero and 100 then what will happen so then basically 
I'll cover this later, this question. I think I need to explain you it in terms of mathematical more. So I'll uh, put another video for this. Okay. Because it's, it's taking too many details of uh, mathematics. Okay. So the only last part is left. I'll cover it in more detail then. Thank you.